So today's session ad agenda, we're going to be looking at a little, little bit about Pearson Ed Excel. We're going to look at content and planning the course because this is a welcome to course. So uh, presuming that we have some delegates who are brand new to this specification. We'll be looking a little bit about at assessment and mark schemes, but there's a lot more about assessment and marking um, in module two, which is Thursday of this week. And then towards the end of the session, we'll be looking at support resources, um, what we can offer you to help support the teaching and learning of your students for this specification. So that's our, our plan for the next two hours. So uh, today is module one of a two module course. Um, today, very much about content, teaching and planning and support. And module two on Thursday, much more focused on marking and assessment. We do touch a little bit on assessment today, but it's not in as much detail as it will be on Thursday. So today we're looking at how the qualification is devised and awarded. Uh, we're going to look at the content of the qualification, going to explore how to plan the course and lessons and the materials that are there to support you with that, looking at the assessment of the qualification and how to prepare students. And we're going to have a little look at the um, support available from Pearson for you. So a little bit about uh, Pearson Ed Excel. Um, so I'm a senior examiner on both of these uh, papers, paper one and paper two. Um, and when I first started working for the company, it was called Edexcel and it was about assessment and marking. Pearson was the publishing arm of the organisation and those two arms have now come together. So we are now Pearson Edexcel. Um, so we are the world's uh, leading learning company. I think the statistics here are always very interesting that we're you know, 150 years of international education experience. That's an awfully long time. 3.4 million learners in over 70 countries and over 9 million scripts marked annually. So we're about qualifications, support and impact. So moving on a little bit to content and planning, uh, which is quite a lot of today's uh, content for this module one. For 4EA1, students study a range of non-fiction and fiction texts from the Pearson Edexcel International GCSE Anthology. If you're new to the specification, you can order these online. Um, they form the core of this specification. I'll be talking a bit more about the anthology as we go through. Um, students develop skills in reading and understanding unseen non-fiction texts. They develop skills to analyse and compare different forms of writing. And they develop skills of transactional writing for paper one and imaginative writing for paper two. Now, Speaking and listening skills, uh, which is now the spoken language endorsement for the IGCSE is optional. So some of you may be choosing it, some of you may not be choosing it for your centres. For the home GCSE, it's mandatory, but it's optional on the international. So we're going to now have just have an overview of um, what the content of the specification is. I'm just going to open my chat at the same time and move it over here. So component one, paper one, is non-fiction text and transactional writing. And it's the more heavily weighted paper. It's 60% of students' final grade. It's a OK, uh, and if you look at um, the resources tab should be to the bottom right of your screen. Uh, if you could have a look, there. if you click on it, the resources will then come up on the uh, right hand side of your screen. Um, so two hours 15 and there are 90 marks available. It is equally split across reading and writing. 
understand section A of that question paper, which is uh, questions one to five, um, are the reading questions. So it's a mixture of short and long answer questions related to a non-fiction text from part A, sorry, part one of the Pearson Ed Excel anthology. And one previously unseen extract that actually links to um, the anthology extract, but it is unseen. And then section B is writing, it's transactional writing. It's one 45 mark um, writing task. There are two assessment objectives and we'll be looking at the uh, marking grids later on. They'll be given an audience form and purpose for that. And they will have a choice of two questions. So we'll see that as we as we go through. Then there's a choice of either the written paper, paper two, component two, or the coursework. So if you're thinking about that, you might want to just pop into the text chat there, whether you're thinking of going down the exam route, so paper, uh, paper one and paper two, or whether you're thinking of going for coursework, which is paper one and coursework paper three. Paper two and coursework mirror each other. So um, on the question paper, section A is 130 mark essay questions on a poetry or prose text from part two of the anthology, which is 30 marks. And assignment A, as we can see there, is poetry and prose text 130 mark question based on any three poetry or prose texts from part two of the anthology. And that must be at least one poetry and at least one prose. And then for paper two, section B, it's imaginative writing 130 mark um, task from a choice of three. And assignment B, if you're using, if you're going down the coursework route, um, is 130 mark imaginative writing task. So just to note on that, that the coursework has recently changed to three texts. It was two texts and a commentary. Now it's three texts. Apologies, my screen has just done something a bit strange. OK, so the spoken language endorsement, we're not actually covering this today, but there are two sets of, um, I suppose we might call them benchmark or specimens um, that are on the website. And Claire Haviland does have some uh, useful webinar resources on this. <coughs> <coughs> So it's a presentation, it can take a variety of forms. It can be a speech or a talk by a student followed by questions from the audience. It can be a formal debate or dialogue such as an interview where the student is able to prepare extended responses to questions or prompts um, which have been shared in advance followed by questions from, from the audience. In all cases, the presentation should be prepared and last no longer than 10 minutes. So a little bit about the specification and the SAMs. The SAMs are the sample assessment materials. The specification is obviously the key document here. And the one we're working with at the moment is issue six. And that document is SO3 in the download pack. It's a, obviously these are, these are the two essential documents when you're doing a lot of planning of the course. Um, the specification outlet outlines the key content, the assessment, the core objectives of the course. The SAMs, the sample assessment materials, are also very important. The SAMs, um, we're working with issue three now, and that's SO4 in your download pack. So you might just want to um, make sure you've got the resources from today downloaded. 
So moving now to the anthology, the anthology is key to this uh, specification. Um, it looks like this. It is SO5 in your download pack. So it's at the heart of the qualification. Part one is used for paper one. Part two is used for papers two and three. Now there is a part three to the anthology and that's used for the English Literature IGCSE, which carries the course code of 4ET. Um, there are some, if you're interested in that, there are some courses coming up on 4ET that you can find on the website. So you order this from their website. Students should have their own copy each to use in the classroom. All of the text needs to be studied in detail and students need to feel confident about these texts. So the anthology text for part one, so this is for paper one, uh, they're non-fiction text, lovely text actually, really, really lovely text. Um, some of them are, are extracts and uh, the Benjamin Zephaniah is, is um, is a whole text has this explorers or boys messing about. So we've got uh, the danger of a single story, a passage to Africa, um, the explorer's daughter, explorers or boys messing about, between a rock and a hard place, young and dyslexic, from a game of polo with a headless goat, beyond the sky and the earth, pages for hawk and Chinese Cinderella. So therefore paper one. So I'm just going to have a quick look at the chat. I can see things coming in there. Okay. Yeah, I can see that's fine. So for papers uh, two and three, our texts are Disabled, Out Out, An Unknown Girl, The Bright Lights of Sarajevo, Still I Rise, The Story of an Hour, The Necklace, Significant Cigarette, Whistle and I'll Come to You, and Night. So those are uh, the poetry prose text for paper two or for the coursework. So if anybody's already teaching these texts, um, you just might want to pop in the text chat. Um, anything, any hints and tips, I suppose, because this is an opportunity to share good practice. Any hints or tips you've got uh, for teaching them. So we'll just give you a moment to um, See if anybody wants to pop anything into the text chat. We are a very small group today, so um, it may be that we don't have anything coming in, but you, you just might want to share something there. So we're now going to look at some um, teaching ideas and approaches. These are just ideas, you don't have to do them. Um, there is a lesson plan, an example lesson plan in your pack to support you, and that's SO7, so SO7. Uh, Pearson provides some lesson plans for the text within the anthology. Um, this, is, this is an interesting one. Um, you can find them on the website, obviously one, one, one provided in your pack. Uh, but you can see there's some um, starter activities and things that you can do with uh, these lesson plans, things that are springboards, I suppose, for, for, for teaching them. OK, and I can see that you can't um, locate the resources. If you go to the resources, oh, you've got no resources tab on your Zoom app. There is a, a hyperlink for that. I wonder if Jasmine can just pop that into the into the text chat for us. But of course, as English teachers, um, we want to equip our students not just for the IGCSE English, but for life. So there is another document, which is SO8 in your pack, that maps the transferable skills for you. That uh, shows that all of the key skills that students are learning through their English curriculum. Um, so the transferable skills framework underpins the design of all P1 
Pearson Edexcel International Qualifications. Um, and there's supporting resources across IPLS, International GCSE, and the International A Level, which you may know as the IAL. Um, it ensures our assessments target the skills students need for successful progression. It increases our support where these skills naturally occur through teaching, learning, and assessment. Pearson materials and mapping support you in identifying and developing the acquisition of these skills in students across the full curriculum. Um, and you can find them on that hyperlink on the slide or, as I said, SO8. Thank you very much, Jasmine, for popping that hyperlink there with all the resources for, for today. That's great. OK, a little bit about uh, approaches for um, unseen text because as well as looking at the anthology for paper one, students need to look at an unseen extract for that same paper. And this can be a challenging part of the exam for students as they're reading texts that they haven't been taught. They have to show that they understand the text for the short answer questions, but also for, for question five, they need to be able to compare the writer's ideas and perspectives in the um, anthology text that they know and they've been taught and the unseen text. So we really need to build their confidence in tackling unseen text. They need to be able to trust their own interpretation of a text as well as recognising and su supplying the evidence to support that interpretation. So thinking about the unseen text, um, this slide is actually from the specification. Um, the text type should include a range of nonfiction texts, such as um, journalism, articles, reviews, speeches, journals, reference book um, extracts. Text type should also include literary nonfiction texts, such as sections from autobiography, letters, obituaries, travel writing. But that's not an extent, um, extensive or exhaustive list. Um, texts that are essentially transient, such as instant news feeds, advertisements, will not form part of the assessments. Um, so thinking about where to find these unseen texts, obviously everything in the anthology is unseen the first time your students see it. Uh, but you might have some ideas here about where to find unseen texts. And again, if anybody's got any good practice, uh, please pop it into the meeting chat. But you can look at the past papers. Uh, they provide you with text from past examination series. Um, and then you've got mark schemes and, and questions as well. And I should also talk here about um, for this qualification for EA1. <coughs> sorry. In all of the exam series, there's also an R paper. Now, you might see this if you've been uh, having a look around the website. So we have 4EA1 and 4EA1R. And if you don't know about the R paper, the R paper is the regional paper. Because this is an international paper and it's got uh, fixed times for students to do it, obviously we can't be asking our students in the Far East to take the exam at the same time as students in the UK or Europe. Uh, so these are papers that are of the same standard, they're on the same, um, they use the same anthology text, but the home paper and the R paper will not have the same text in the same series, obviously. But it does mean we've got a double set of papers to work with and a double set of um, unseen text that we can use for practice in the classroom. So that's just a, a little kind of hint and tip that there are lots of papers there for you. Um, GCSE English Language site, that's the, the home site, 1ENO um, paper, also has a number of anthologies um, and there are lots of extracts uh, that Key Stage 4 students can use. Obviously, there are lots of websites, teaching websites like the Times Educational Supplement, BBC Bite Size, Teach It, Teach Wire, English Biz, all of those. You might know others that you can pop into the chat as well. Um, so please. Pop anything that you use or you found useful in there, that would be very helpful for others. So 
So students need to be encouraged to develop dynamic reading skills through all their reading. It gives them confidence to tackle these unseen texts, um, as well as the, the anthology texts, of course. So thinking about questioning and challenging the text, making connections between texts, you know, envis envisaging and predicting what's going to happen next. How do we know that? What's, what is there in the writing? What is there in the, the uh, decisions that the writers have made that make us able to predict what might happen, to speculate? You know, they need to be able to play with ideas, to keep their options open as, as they read. Um, so just thinking now about some ways of, of approaching the unseen text. So Barbara Blyman from the English Media Centre suggests that we often start at the wrong point when asking students to interrogate texts. So thinking about them really, I suppose, being text detectives. Instead of perhaps what's your response and why, um, we tend to hone in on, on smaller considerations. Uh, what's the information, language techniques, structure techniques? And she says that especially lower down the school, um, we ought to start with these four simple questions. What are my first thoughts about the text? Am I puzzled or intrigued by anything in the text? What do I like about it? And does it remind me of anything? So perhaps taking a, a step back from the text and looking at it um, more as a, as a text detective rather than what device does the writer use. So to give you um, an example of this, this next one is about using images. And there are those four questions at the beginning. Um, what are our first thoughts about this image? Because images are a way in, aren't they, to, to kind of asking questions about text. Um, are, am I puzzled or intrigued by anything about the text? What do I like about it? Does it remind me of anything? So again, you might just want to think about that and yeah, I'm just going to give you a minute to type in the chat in the text chat there anything you might think about that text in relation to those four questions. Okay, so most students feel comfortable and confident with reading image and um, short films. I mean, they, they look at images all the time, don't they, on their phones and so on. But using images often helps us to um, notice detail, to explore ideas um, that are linked to what we see, to analyse meaning and to evaluate effectiveness. And of course, those are some of the key English things that we need to, to look at. Um, so analysing text in the classroom um, and how to teach reading skills can sometimes, you know, images can sometimes be a way in to help us with that. And we can also use short extracts. So here we've got two short extracts. Um, talking a little bit there about the Shark Trust UK on the right hand one and the um, sharks on the on the right hand one. 
So just going to give you a second to read, read through those two little snippets um, on the screen. So this one is a nice opener for students. You know, the extracts don't have to be long when we're starting off with this. Um, and you can ask students things like, you know, which one would you support and why? And this helps with uh, talking about tone and purpose, as well as literal meaning, of course. It's just quite a nice sort of starter activities to get students used to interpreting text. We're going to move on now to looking at AO2 skills building AO2 skills. And AO2 is our um, analysis assessment objective. We will be looking at the assessment objectives um, in a little while. But here are just, this is not an exhaustive list, um, but here are some examples of language and structure. Um, I'm just going to give you a moment as well to, to just have a read through of that. Um, But the you know, AO2 obviously is good for the anthology text. Um, it's the skill for question four on, on paper one, but it's also good in terms of comparison for um, AO3. AO2 helps us to build AO3 for the question five on paper one. So thinking for a moment about comparison, we're just working our way through the skills for, for our paper um, and how to approach the comparison. Again, if you want to pop anything into the chat, you can. Anything that you found that works well for teaching comparison. But obviously, you can use past papers um, to study the types of nonfiction unseen texts. Introduce parts of or whole anthology text as unseen. Explore topics which are suggested by the text in part one of the anthology. And there's some lovely um, wide ranging texts there. Research possible short nonfiction texts on similar topics. Devise short questions to test understanding. Devise a linking analytical question. Um, obviously, use the uh, past papers or the R paper um, and think about themes or issues of both text and device comparative questions there. Um, anything you would you would use, please, as I said, pop into the into the text chat there. So those are thinking about the reading questions, the reading questions, particularly on paper one. Um, but it's not all about reading, of course. Half of the marks on that paper are for writing. So moving now to our writing questions, um, thinking about the different forms of writing that, that students need to do. Half of the marks on each paper are allocated to writing. Students um, are required to write one piece of transactional writing as part of paper one. They get a choice of two tasks there and students are required to write one piece of imaginative writing for paper two if you're taking the exam route or for the coursework and for the exam route they get a choice of three questions which we'll be looking at later so it's important that students are aware of the different forms of writing and how they can interest and engage the reader so again, there's an opportunity now to use the group chat. We're all very quiet in the group chat at the moment, but thinking about how you prepare your students for the two types of writing tasks or how you're thinking of preparing them, uh, transactional and imaginative. Um, how do you get them to uh, improve their writing skills? How do you combine the reading and writing skills in your lessons? And do you spend enough time? Just a, a question, really. Um, 
on teaching writing. So just ha have a little think about that. Um, just while we're on this subject, um, some of our schools in the UK have started to introduce working uh, writing workshops within their curriculum. It's a lesson, uh, perhaps once every two weeks, that's just dedicated to free writing. Some, use a, some schools use a separate notebook for these lessons. And students are encouraged to write about something they want to write about. It can be imaginative, persuasive, but it's all, the focus is on why they make the choices they make. And teachers have found this to be really useful. Um, it's encouraged students to talk about their own writing and explain and understand the choices they've made. Um, Again, uh, if you look at the English and Media Centre, uh, Barbara Blyman has some, quite, quite a lot to say about this. It's just a useful resource. You know, it gives students opportunities to experiment and take risks, as well as they, you know, encouraging them to edit and redraft. Um, it creates, I suppose, a, a culture in which they become writers at work and writing is a pleasurable task. Uh, they, that brings writing back, back into the curriculum, I guess, in, in a way. Um, so just give you a moment if you want to share any uh, good practice that you, you know about in the text chat. Okay, we're going to move on now to think about um, planning a little bit and helping students to plan their work. Um, again, it's very good if you want to share good practice. The meeting chat is very, very quiet, uh, but please, please use it. Um, Thinking about mind mapping, brainstorming, listing ideas onto a page, you know, what's the best way of planning? It might be different for different students, of course. Encouraging them then to, you know, select what, what is the best of their ideas and then list them in an order where it's easy to see how they could move between paragraphs. It's always good, of course, to model this. Um, we're, all, we're all kind of whiteboards now, aren't we? So it's, it's very easy to do that. So let them see you planning a piece of writing um, using a past question, maybe um, creating a paragraph plan for, for writing um, using a, a frame, leaving space for ideas, those kind of things, including information on how to produce a planning frame or how to create the best structure for different purposes. So how, how would you teach planning? Uh, I'll give you a moment to, to Pop something into into the chat. Okay, that's, that's a great idea, Yasmin, thank you. Yeah, working backwards, the students look at an example response and sort of deconstruct it. Yeah, thank, thank you for that.
Okay, another way, um, you can, another thing you can use is using images, of course, to, to inspire writing. Um, <laughs> yeah, the World Cup or even the Six Nations. Um, yeah, the mo modern scenarios. Yeah, that's a, that's a good idea as well. So th uh, you know, this one is who eats from these fridges? You know, that kind of activity asks for adjectives and names, some dialogue um, for reactions. What do you think? Fridge one, fridge two, fridge three. Who who do they belong to? Have a go. Type it. Type in the in the text chat. See what you think. Any more ideas about um, teaching writing? Anybody else want to add to the chat? Might be thinking about which of those fridges you would like, the contents of which, which one is most like yours. Okay, so let's try putting um, this together. So got ideas about content, how to teach the course. And then we need to make sure we're leaving enough time to, to cover it. And, you know, you might be doing language and literature. So how does that fit? So you need to think about how much teaching time you have. Which papers are you teaching? You know, and why are you putting different emphasis on um, coursework? Or are you teaching papers one and, and paper two? Um, how much time you need to allow for revision? Um, and when are you going to build in your mocks or your tests? Um, so thinking about those things, um, just going to think about in the download pack. So looking at SO9 and SO10, there are a couple, those are a couple of planners. Um, just have a, a read through. I'm actually going to mute for five minutes and give you time to have a look through those planners. Otherwise, it becomes a very, very busy course. Um, some of you may already be teaching it, so you might have suggestions about where to start. And that's what the, the chat is there for. So we're just going to take five minutes while you look at SO9 and SO10 and have a think about planning. Um, I'll just pop in the text chat that we're going to be on mute for five minutes in case you think you're you're not uh, your machine isn't working well. So.
Okay, so we're going to move on now to thinking about um, assessment and the exams. Um, there'll be lots more of this. This is a kind of an overview. There'll be lots more of this in Thursday's training where we will be doing some marking and so on and so on. So a little introduction to assessment. Paper one is non-fiction and transactional writing. And paper two, or the coursework, is <coughs> I'm sorry, the poetry and prose text and imaginative writing. And as I mentioned earlier, paper one is more heavily weighted than paper two. And then there is the spoken language endorsement, which is optional. So we're doing lots of marking of scripts in the next se uh, session on Thursday. But we're today much more of, a, of an overview. So we're going to look at the assessment objectives. We've talked a little bit about these earlier on, but there are three reading assessment objectives covering understanding of text, critical analysis and comparison. And those are AO1, AO2 and AO3. AO just being the shorthand for assessment objective. And then there are two writing assessment objectives covering content and structure and accuracy. And those are AO4 and AO5, assessment objective four and assessment objective five. All awarding bodies, of course, have, have um, assessment objectives. And they form the basis of all exam papers, question papers, and mark schemes. The questions, um, as you'll see, are uh, very clearly signposted to the assessment objective that they're assessing. So the assessment objectives um, with their weightings are here. So AO1 is read and understand a variety of texts selecting and interpreting information, ideas, and perspectives. AO2 is understand and analyze how the writers use linguistic and structural devices to achieve their effects. AO3 is explore links and connections between writers, ideas, and perspectives, as well as how these are conveyed. AO4, so those are the three writing assessment of Sorry, those are the three reading assessment objectives. AO4 and AO5 are the two writing assessment objectives. So AO4 is communicate effectively and imaginatively, adapting form, tone, and register of writing for specific purposes and audiences. And AO5 is write clearly using a range of vocabulary and sentence structures with appropriate paragraphing and accurate spelling, punctuation, and grammar. And then AO6, if you're doing it, is the spoken language endorsement, which, of course, doesn't form part of the um, final grade, but does appear on the front of the certificate as an endorsement at either pass, merit or distinction. So it might be useful here to make sure you've got the question papers near you. Um, so question paper one uh, from June 2023 is SO13 in your pack. And question paper two from June 2023 is SO14 in your pack. So where are these assessment objectives assessed? Oh, sorry, I should have just said something about the weighting there. AO1 is 15%, AO2 20%, AO3 15%, AO4 30%, AO5 20%. So we can see there that um, the reading assessment objectives, AO1, 2, and 3, equal 50% of the paper, and AO4, AO5, the writing, is also 50%. So that's um, equally weighted. So where are they assessed? So in section A, the reading section of the paper 1, AO1, AO2, and AO3, and we'll see how these are signposted in a minute. And then section B of paper one, which is the writing question, is AO4 and AO5. Then when we move on to paper two, or the coursework, so we're looking at the first part of that. So 
section A of the question paper or the first assignment of the coursework. We've got AO1 and AO2 being assessed. And then for section B of paper two and assignment B of um, the coursework, we've got AO4 and AO5 because that's the writing question, the imaginative writing. And you can see that AO3 is, that's the comparison um, assessment objective, is only in paper one. So a little bit about um, advising your students about timing, how do they time um, this? Uh, it just might be something, if you are already teaching it, that you might want to, you know, there is, there is no right answer to this, of course. Um, so two hours, 15 minutes um, is what students have available here. We get quite a lot of questions from, from teachers about this. Um, no right or wrong approach, number of text, two, two texts to read, one that they know from the anthology, one unseen. Um, there are six questions here, five reading questions and one writing question. There are two sections. 90 raw marks. Um, having a look at um, SO13, which was the um, paper one from June 2023, have a little look and think about how you would advise your students to, um, to split their time. If you've got any ideas, pop it in the text chat, but I'm just gonna be quiet for a few minutes um, while you just have a look through the paper. Um, training as an ideal time, of course, Busy teachers don't have time to think about these things um, often outside of the training. So just have a quick look at SO13. Think about two hours, 15 minutes. What are you going to advise your students? And if you want to um, share anything in the text chat, please do.
So one of the things that's proved very popular here in the UK is um, what we call walking, talking mocks. And this is where students sit in the same exam room, hopefully where they'll be doing their exam, um, and if possible in the same seat. Um, and they're given an exam paper, which is as close to being like the real thing as possible. So if you can, you know, the whole, whole writing booklet as well. And they're literally talked through every question on the paper. So somebody leads the session, often with a mic, um, and says, you know, that even the smallest step. So underline the keywords, uh, underline compare, underline ana analyze, underline language and structure, whatever it is. Um, and then you hope, the whole idea is, isn't it, that they remember that. So they write their response in those timed conditions with the amount of time that you've discerned that is best for your, your cohort. Um, and then you hope that when they take the real thing, they remember that moment. Oh, how do I do this question? Oh yeah, the key, I underline the keywords and so on. Just offer it to you because it's, it's proved very, very popular here. Um, okay, so we're going to move on now. I'm going to um, we're going to talk about the AO1 questions. So at this point, I'd like you to find SO14 and SO16, which are the mark schemes for paper one and paper two. And I'm going to type all this in the text chat in a minute. And I'd like you to read text one of paper one, which is SO13, and the text is on page 22. So again, I'm going to mute for five minutes. I'm going to pop in the text chat what I'd like you to do.
So that's uh, text one is um, very topical, isn't it? Very topical. And here are a couple of answers. Uh, this question is retrieval. So there um, are definite answers for it. And so there's no levels based mark scheme here. So uh, if we look at the first one, David not wants to help people. And David not likes the thrill of um, working in the war zone. And we can see that both of those are in the mark scheme. So answer one gets two marks. Um, there are two appropriate quotations here. They've been selected. They're clearly set out in the space provided. Um, answer two, where the student has put trouble and terrible places. If we look at that carefully, trouble is not in the line reference. So it's not in lines three to five. So that no mark can be awarded for that. The phrase for the selected for the second point, terrible places, does not on its own answer the question. So sadly that student didn't get any marks for that response. So moving on to the AO2, um, the AO2 questions, we're looking now at analysis and we're looking at section A, paper one, question four. So what's demanded here is a more detailed and developed response is required for this question because it's 12 marks. Candidates need to comment on the writer's use of language and structure, but must read the whole question and ensure that their points are relevant. So um, this is on an anthology text. So they have studied this text. They will know about the language and structure devices within it because you will have taught them, but they need to um, make sure their answer is focused on the focus of the question, if that's not too many focuses in the same sentence. Um, so language points might cover things like word choice and their impact, types of language employed, um, techniques such as similes and metaphors. The effect of these must be considered, how they contribute to the tone, the reader engagement, etc. Structural points, I mean, we did have the slide earlier on some AO2 examples, but they might cover things like sentence length and structure, the use of rhetorical questions, paragraphing, the development of ideas throughout the text, you know, if there's any shift or, or uh, zooming in or zooming out, those kind of things, the use of punctuation. And again, the purpose effect of these should be considered. So the mark scheme for um, question four is what we call a levels based mark scheme. Um, <coughs> <coughs> so the mark scheme will have indicative content and the indicative content is very specifically linked to the question. <coughs> but it is indicative, it is just an indication of what students might write, it's not, it's not a checklist. Um, we'll obviously be doing a lot more on mark schemes on, on, in Thursday's training. But if we look at this, we can see how um, we're looking at basic in level one, uh, basic identification, little understanding of the language and structure and um, limited quotations, references. In level two, we're looking at some and comments on those language and structured uh, devices. The references would be valid, but not developed. When we get to level three, we're looking at clear understanding and explanation. So if we look at how these move up, we've moved from comment to explanation. Um, and the references are appropriate to the points being made. When we move to level four, we're looking at thorough understanding and exploration. Um, and then the references are detailed and appropriate. 
And up in level five, we're looking at the understanding being perceptive and there being you know, true analysis of the language and structure features and discriminating references. We'll be looking a lot more at this on, um, on Thursday, but we're just giving you a bit of an overview as we, as we go through today. So that's AO2, it's our analysis of language and structure assessments objective. And this is an extract from a level five um, response. So in your delegate book, the delegate download, which is SO2, um, I'm gonna give you a little bit of time to read through the, the script for this one. Um, it is level five, um, SO2, just have, have a read through of that and um, see what you think. Uh, using that levels base mark scheme, we're looking in the top range of 11 to 12. We're not asking you for a mark. We're just telling you that it's it's level five achievements here. And I'll give you a little bit of a comment on this when you've had a chance to read through. Hopefully you've had time to have a little look through that. Um, it's an impressive response. Uh, there are a number of perceptive and insightful points. Demonstrates an extremely good understanding, doesn't it, of that impact of the smile. The candidate is discriminating in their selection of references. Um, there's analysis of a range of language and structural features. Uh, such as the use of detail, short, short sentence, triplet of adjectives, repetition, um, all of those on that first page. The points are often developed. There's close examination of word choice. Um, it kind of not only considers how Alagaya is moved by what he sees, but also looks at how the reader is affected by the way in which the piece is structured. So it did get uh, full marks, um, fulfills all of level five really. What, what more could you expect? It's a very, very Im impressive response, isn't it? So hopefully you enjoyed that one. So that's a little look at AO2. As I said, there's a lot more of this kind of looking at, at uh, hands-on assessment in Thursday's training. So moving on now to AO3, AO3, if you remember, is our comparison assessment objective. Um, and it's assessed in paper one, question five, and that's the only place it's assessed. So if we have a, a look, you know, the, on that um, June 2023 paper, and we're looking at the Alagaya against um, the unseen text. 
The question was compare how the writers present their ideas and perspectives about their experiences. Support your answer with detailed examples from both texts, including brief quotations. So thinking about um, AO3 comparison in question five, compare is the command verb. So it's a good idea to introduce comparative points right from the start. Candidates will be asked to compare how the writers present their ideas and perspectives. So need to consider the author's viewpoints, the attitudes, the thoughts, the opinions about what it is they're talking about. Candidates should look for points of both similarity and difference and support what they say with evidence from the text. And the indicative content section of the mark scheme for the specimen papers uh, give a good idea of the kind of comments that candidates could make. And of course, for the mark scheme for 2023, what they could make for that particular question. So again, we're looking at um, the levels based mark scheme here. And we can see that for this question, there is a bar at the top of level two where students can't go beyond a mark of eight if they don't refer to both texts. So thinking about the mark scheme, we've got um, in level one, there's no comparison. It would be descriptive, limited references. Then in level two, we're thinking about obvious comparisons, some comments, valid references, and then we stop at a mark of eight if there's only um, one text. Into level three, a range of comparisons. And again, you can see how this second bullet point is a little bit like our AO2 mark scheme for question four, because we're looking at explanation there of ideas and perspectives and references being appropriate. Up in level four, a wide range of comparisons. And then that word again, exploration of writers, ideas and perspectives, including how theme, language and or structure are used across the text. And the references would be balanced across the two texts. Remembering, of course, that they will know one text better than the other um, because they, they've studied one. So we're looking at them, you know, they're thinking on their feet for this unseen text here. And then in level five, we're looking at varied and comprehensive range of comparisons and analysis of writers ideas and perspectives. And balanced references discriminating, they fully support the points being made. So now we're going to look at um, an example of um, level five achievement. So again, I'll give you a few minutes to um, look through this. It is in your pack. This is just a screenshot of part of it. It's just an extract from it. Um, so I'll give you some time to, to have a read of that, uh, maybe three or four minutes um, before I give you some feedback on it.
So hopefully you've had time to have a little look at that. Again, a, um, a very nice, nice response, isn't it? So there's a, the student has given us a clear plan. The candidate presents an extremely full and detailed response, really, with some excellent analysis of language and perspective. There are salient themes and ideas carefully selected. You can see the student has really stood back and thought, what do I need to evidence? Uh, the quotations are interwoven really skillfully into the answer. They always support the points being made. There's a varied and comprehensive range here. Um, and this one did get four marks of, of uh, 22 here. Very, very well deserved for this candidate. OK, so that's taking us a little uh, romp, if you like, through the reading um, section of paper one. So we're just going to move on to AO4 and AO5 writing questions. Um, so there are two level space mark schemes here. So I'm just showing you, because they wouldn't all fit on the slides, uh, levels four and five. Um, so the first one there is for AO4, and the second one is for AO5. But I think we've got an idea now of how these levels work. Um, we can see here that the first uh, bullet point for the AO4 is on communication. Um, so in level four, it's successfully perceptive and subtle in level five. The second bullet point is in relation to the expectations of the reader and the, the focus on the purpose. So secure in level four and sharply focused in level five. And the third bullet point is about form, tone and register. It's effective in level four and sophisticated in level five. And if we move on to the AO5, we can see that the first uh, bullet point is about managing the ideas and the structure, structural and grammatical features used by the, by the student, by the candidate, as we call them. Um, so they manage it in level four, they manipulate it in level five. Um, and the second bullet point is about vocabulary and spelling, so a wide selective vocabulary in level four, and extensive vocabulary used strategically with rare spelling errors in level five. Uh, a reminder, it doesn't have to be, um, if does, everything doesn't have to be absolutely accurate to be able to gain full marks here. Um, and the third bullet point is about punctuation and the use of it, so range for clarity, and sentence structures being um, managed for deliberate effect in level four. And then in level five, punctuating with accuracy, adding emphasis, precision, um, sentence structures the sentences accurately and selectively to create effect in level five. Um, obviously, there, there are levels one, two, and three as well that are in the mark scheme that we've been looking at um, today. OK, so again, we're going to uh, move to look at a script. Um, this one is in your pack as well. This is uh, it looks like this. This is just obviously an extract from it. Um, it's a level five achievement. It's on question six. Um, I'm going to mute. I'll pop in the chat what we're doing because I'll give you a little bit of time. Um, you're obviously now reading a longer response and looking at two um, different mark schemes, AO4 and AO5. So I'm just going to um, mute for a moment and put that task into the, the chat.
I hope you enjoyed that response. Um, so this candidate opens with a question um, and provides a possible answer. It's a skillfully constructed start, isn't it? It's very assured and even sophisticated in places. Um, the reader is addressed directly, drawn into this piece as the candidate explains how beneficial helping out can be. There are some light touches of humour um, with references to family and the English essay. Uh, communication is perceptive, high quality of writing sustained really. And it's this one is um, firmly in level five for both AO4 and AO5. So that's a, a kind of run through of, a, of paper one. Of course, one of the questions um, for you as centres is do you do the exam route or the coursework route? So we're just going to talk a little bit about paper two. Um, so in paper two, there are again two sections. Section A, which is poetry and prose. Uh, it's an essay question on one anthology text from part two of the um, anthology. AO1 and AO2 are assessed here and there are 30 marks available. And then section B of uh, paper two is creative writing. Uh, it's a creative response. AO4 and AO5 are assessed. There are 30 marks available here, 18 for AO4 and 12 for AO5. The papers are in your delegate pack. Mark schemes are in um, the, your delegate pack as well. So this was the question from June 2023. How does the writer, sorry, the quest, paper uh, question one, how does the writer create sympathy for the boy in Out Out? Now, of course, remembering that students have studied these texts um, as part of their anthology, they would have studied all of the ones in this section in class. In your answer, you should, should write about how the saw and the boy's reaction to the accident are presented how the other people in the poem react to the accident and the use of language and structure. So some clear signposting there to um, the analytical uh, assessment objective two. You should support your answer with close reference to the poem, including brief quotations. So it's a scaffolded question. They've got some definite places to go with those bullet points and we're told that they should write about. Um, so that's that was the question for paper two. So for in the summer of June 2023, these were the writing questions. Remember, this is imaginative writing and students just choose one of these tasks. Again, it's a 30 mark question. So the questions here for this uh, for the June 2023 was right about a time uh, when you or someone you know met up with family or friends. Your response could be real or imagined. Your response will be marked for the accurate and appropriate use of vocabulary, spelling, punctuation and grammar. So students are very clearly signposted to the AO4 and then in the italics they're signposted to the AO5. And there will always be a choice of three questions um, for the imaginative writing question. So a little bit now about if you choose to take paper three, the coursework routes. These um, are the new requirements for the coursework. Uh, if, you're, if you've already been teaching the specification, of course, assignment A is now different with three texts, no commentary anymore. It used to be two texts and a commentary, now it's three texts. Um, one of them has to be poetry, one of them has to be prose. So one 30 mark essay question both based on three poetry or prose texts from part two of the Pearson Edits our International GCSE English Anthology. And assignment B, the imaginative writing, one 30 mark imaginative writing task.
So this um, page, this is a screenshot from um, the sample assessment materials. Uh, you may want to look at this. These are the requirements for assignment A. Um, these have this has been updated in the light of the change to the specification in in um, the sixth version of the specification, the third version of the SAMS, as we talked about at the beginning. Um, so you can see here there's guidance for teachers. Uh, I'll just give you a minute to to read through that. I won't read it all through for you. You can just have a read through. Um, and ask any questions about this in, in the text chat. So I'll just be quiet for a moment. Okay, any questions about the demands um, of assignment A for the coursework for those of you doing taking the coursework route? So this is a, a sample task for um, assignment A. Discuss how the writers use language and structure to present, and then you insert your chosen focus in anthology text one, anthology text two, and anthology text three. In your response, you should discuss the ideas and perspectives of the writers about the chosen focus, discuss how the writers use language and structure to achieve their effects, and include textual references to illustrate the points you make. You should title your work. OK, and that, again, is from the sample assessment material. So if you need to see any of this after uh, today's presentation, then that's where you'll find them. So for assignment B, this is the guidance for teachers. Uh, again, this is taken from the sample assessment material, so you can access it um, after today's training. And I'll just give you a moment to have a little read through of of that assignment B slide, um, the requirements and obviously the assessment objectives and so on. A bit like assignment A, here are some possible um, assignments. Write about a time when you or someone you knew, someone you know, were reunited with friends or family. Your response could be real or imagined. In your response, you should describe ideas, events, settings and characters, use appropriate techniques for creative writing, vocabulary, imagery, language techniques, use a voice that attempts to make the piece interesting and or believable to the chosen audience, and use a register and style appropriate for the chosen form, which may include colloquial elements, dialogue within description or narrative, 
or a sustained single voice in a monologue. You should title your work. Your response will be marked for the accurate and appropriate use of vocabulary, spelling, punctuation, and grammar. So, um, again, these are in the sample assessment materials uh, if you want to, to look at those. So, the next slide is just a, a reminder of the spoken language endorsements and the demands of that. Again, this is uh, taken from the sample assessment materials and it will very much uh, depend on whether or not, as a centre, you've made the decision to offer your students the opportunity of doing the endorsements or not. So that brings us on to um, support and resources. There are There is lots and lots of support um, that we offer you uh, as examples. Um, to see it on the, on the website, but there are other things as well. So where do you find the resources? Well, the if you go up into IGCSE English Language A, there's a hyperlink there, and you can see that there's the anthology, the course planner, there's exemplar materials, there's guidance, there's past training. There are all kinds of things that you can click on um, at, that will bring those resources up for you. So lots and lots of things there. You can see there, for example, there are 128 um, pieces of exam materials, past papers, the main paper, the R paper, and so on. Uh, there are exemplars, there's guidance. There are 80 things in teaching and learning materials for you to have a look at. Um, in terms of published resources, uh, we are committed to helping teachers deliver the qualifications um, that there is a textbook, a, a student book and a teacher book. You do not have to have these to be able to teach it, but we're just telling you that they are available. Um, and that's the resource there that you can see. Then we have um, access to scripts, the ATS service. This is a free online portal which allows you on results day to um, see your students' exam papers, providing they've given you permission to do that. We, we like everything to be transparent. It's, it's a very useful um, tool to have a look at. If, if there are any um, disappointed students on results day, you can immediately look and see why that might um, have happened. It also gives you the opportunity to understand the marking, uh, it's an aid for teaching and preparing other cohorts. Um, you can download everything from, from that portal. Then we have uh, the platform known as Results Plus, which is uh, a free results analysis tool. It, may, it allows you to look at your cohort and other cohorts in your country, other cohorts internationally, boys against girls, class against class, all kinds of things. Um, it gives detailed breakdown of student performance. It might help inform teaching if your students, for example, are doing less well on comparison and much better on, on you know, AO2, then you can kind of tweak your teaching. Um, yeah, all of the benchmarking against other schools, uh, mock exam results can be fed into that. Um, so lots and lots of things there, there are. Uh, schools can sign up via that hyperlink. But also you can look at how other schools have used it. There's some YouTube videos and things like that that you can look at. Exam Wizard is a, another platform. It's a free tool for teachers. It means you can go in and make your own exam papers. Um, you can use the existing mark schemes. The most, exam, the most recent exam content is available on Exam Wizard before it's available on the general website. Um, so it's just a, a, a very useful, useful tool. Um, some of you may know Claire Haviland. Uh, Claire is our subject advisor for all things um, English, if you like. She uh, looks after the Home 1ENO papers, the International 4EA, uh, Specification A, International, Specification B, International Language, um, the 4ET, International Literature, and she looks after the international A level and the main A level as well. So if you've got any questions after today's training, 
Um, she is the person to contact. Uh, there's her Twitter feed. Always interesting to see what she's reading. Um, she does regular updates that you can access, uh, little videos and things that you can access via the main website. But any questions um, after today, um, you can either hold them till Thursday, but if there any questions, please do ask Claire. She, she, she's lovely and she's excellent and she gets back to you very, very quickly. And that brings us to any questions at the end of this um, training. So I might stop the uh, 